Hello and welcome back. We're finally there. Welcome to the last video in the 1968 Volkswagen Beetle plastic model kit build. Between the actual building of my first plastic model kit and the crash course in videoing and editing I've put myself through, I'm happy to bring this one to a very satisfying end. As I finished up the last few details before putting glue to plastic, I must say, I'm really pleased with my first foray into the world of plastic model kits and YouTube. If for no other reason than I've learned a lot of new skills and dusted off some old ones I hadn't used in a while and learned that I've got a lot to learn. Working on this little guy also brought back a lot of memories of me working with my grandfather during the summers to restore classic cars he collected or was fixing up to trade. But the one I remember most fondly was a early 50s model Willis pickup truck. And building a kit for that would be, would be a great way to own one of those and I'm looking for that kit now. After unmasking the door panels, I wanted to knock out the rest of the chassis so it could be drying while I finished up the rest of the interior parts. I had created a custom color mix which I really wanted to make sure I included here. The, the instructions were calling for flat black, but my memory of these cars is that the chassis were never flat black. It was always a gloss or semi-gloss enamel, or at least it appeared to be. And this looked pretty close to what my memories were of those vehicles even after they had been on the road for a while of course. I mean most of these vehicles I was working on was at least as old as I was at the time if not older. After I had finished up the interior, the seat belts on the door panels looked really crappy. So I sanded them off and started over, and I thought it looked a lot better the second time around. Although I'm still far from satisfied with the results, and more practice is definitely going to be needed. After a bit more detail work, I had finished up the interior and began installing the seats. One lesson I learned early on was that glue doesn't stick to paint very well, so there was a lot of scraping and filing involved, followed by the inevitable scratch mending and touching up everything that had got scratched while I was cleaning off the paint. The YouTube aspect of this has been just as much fun as building the kit itself. And the best way for YouTube to show my content to other like-minded individuals such as yourself is for you to hit that like button. Gluing the hood, or I should say the bonnet, I found to be a bit tricky without getting glue on the clear coat. In the future, if a situation like this comes up, I believe I may try putting everything together before clear coating it. That way, well, you don't have to worry about the glue and hopefully it would all look more homogeneous, if you will. Okay, so these little water slide decals were a real challenge 
I can see why products were developed to help these things go on better and look like they're supposed to be there. What you're seeing here is actually the second attempt at this dial. The first one was a complete failure in that the decal ripped in half before I could even get it onto the dashboard. And this one, hopefully there, luckily there was a second one, it's still crooked when I was done. After fiddling with it for a few minutes and, and trying to get it in place with a Q-tip, the Q-tip broke and I decided I had better just cut my losses and not mess with it anymore. So I moved on to the windows. I've seen some of the other modelers on YouTube use a permanent marker to finish around the windows, but I didn't trust myself enough to do that. And I just knew I'd have permanent ink all over everything. So I used a flat black acrylic so I could clean it up if I messed it up, and I thought it did okay. After a few more pieces of trim were installed and we let the windows dry a bit, we came back and went to gluing those in. And boy, was that a mess. I was using the tester's clear part cement and it was a bit thin for my taste and it just sort of ran everywhere. So I'm gonna be looking for a different solution for the next time. If anybody's got a better suggestion for uh, window cement, I'd love you if you'd leave it in the comments. Here, here's a couple of interesting things I had to figure out. I needed some transparent paint colors for the turn signals and brake lights, but when I looked online at the cost of these paints, it was something I was not willing to shell out money for. Four tiny dots of paint was going to cost about nine bucks to get the paint, just to do those four tiny dots. So I thought, hmm, I could make this myself. Also, you know, buying it, where's the fun in that? So I whipped up a couple of batches of some homemade alcohol inks and a little bit of gloss polyurethane and made a fantastic transparent paint. When I had the mix correct, I thought it worked beautifully. Even though my painting technique aside, the, the paint worked great. The trick was when putting the ink in the polyurethane, you had to let the ink evaporate off so that it was just the paint and the color left behind. A little help from a hairdryer sped this up quite nicely. If you'd like to see how I make my homemade alcohol ink, leave a comment below and I'll see about making that video for you. After letting the glue dry on the tail lights a little bit, I finished up some of the smaller chrome pieces and added in the headlights.
For the windshield wipers, I got out the tester's clear plastic cement again. It worked okay for this application. I was a little concerned about using any of the solvent-based glues this close to the glass. I, I was a little disappointed in the detail of the windshield wipers themselves. They're just being a solid chunk of chrome is was not very realistic to me. I think in the if I come across this again, I may try removing the chrome and hand detailing those myself. Okay, so keep your eye on the latch for the engine cover. Now you see it, now you don't, and I never saw it again. The rest of the chrome details went on pretty smoothly except right there towards the end when old Butterfingers Brian showed back up and dropped the bumper and slinging glue everywhere. I, I debated on whether or not to put both the side view mirrors on the car. The, the direction showed only one on the driver's side but I thought that was really odd looking without both of them so I, I added the one for the passenger side anyway. If you're thinking to yourself, that's a lot of glue, you're right, that is a lot of glue. But for whatever reason, the bottom of the interior and the chassis weren't meeting up and I couldn't figure out where they made contact for the glue to actually stick. So, so I went with the spray and pray sort of approach and just put a bunch of glue in there and then clamped the booger out of it in hopes that it would just find a spot and take. And it did. And there you have it, one 1968 Volkswagen plastic model kit complete. If you enjoyed watching me build this as much as I enjoyed building it, I highly recommend plastic model kits as a hobby. And with that, thank you so much for watching and getting all the way to the end of the video. I would really appreciate it if you could see your way clear to hit that like button and even subscribe because there will be definitely be more plastic model kits on the way. Thanks again.